is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour, with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and the Tech Insider, David White. And welcome to another wonderful edition of the Power Trading Hour with your squeezably soft host, David White at the headquarters of Technical Trading and Investing, TFNN.com. And uh, we've got a nice little day out here when we check into the markets uh, up uh, seven points on the S&P cash with uh, 2.6 billion shares. So volume is starting to at least pick up. Uh, normally, I think we had about 2.2 or 2.3 starting yesterday at this time on the consolidated New York Stock Exchange tape. Uh, if you listen to the show and others, a lot of times you're going to hear uh, different volume levels. Those volume levels uh, can be either the consolidated tape or the floor traded tape. Uh, it's a big enough sample that uh, they're pretty much going to track the same, but you need to compare apples to apples. Uh, the 2.6 number that I just gave out includes all the ECNs and all the shares of stocks of anything that traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, if just because uh, it was listed there, but may have traded somewhere else, uh, we are counting all of the shares traded in that. And probably uh, fairly interesting that just about 30% of shares uh, traded now actually are traded through the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, it's uh, significantly cheaper to trade on uh, electronic commerce networks, which are known as ECNs. Uh, if you uh, go to like bats.com, uh, you'll find uh, a, a good example of what an ECN is uh, and uh, maybe a little bit more description. Uh, but there are lots of ECNs. Uh, they are all hooked up uh, in a network uh, to the exchanges and uh, have the ability uh, to trade your stock just like if you had uh, two guys on there scribbling on a piece of paper uh, down in a pit. Uh, but again, uh, less than 30% of uh, those shares now are traded on the New York Stock Exchange, and actually only about 2% to 3% of actual shares are traded with any human intervention. Uh, even though they may be traded there, it's still computers. Uh, you may have remembered a guest we had here uh, that uh, was uh, talking, and uh, boy, uh, he was on CNBC, but I think the day or two before he was on here, and I kind of laughed because uh, uh, he said basically there was uh, it was a ghost town, uh, compared to when he was there five or six years earlier, and it basically just a set for new, uh, for CNBC anymore. Uh, they were actually half the uh, floor uh, when he looked at it. Uh, that there just isn't a lot of need. And in fact, uh, one of the other guests we talked with uh, about uh, how everything is really in New Jersey. Uh, there's almost nothing of the New York Stock Exchange in New York. It's all in a secure trading facility uh, in New Jersey. So uh, a lot of song and dance, uh, smoke and mirrors, not a lot of reality there. But uh, just uh, if you are a new listener to this show, which uh, we can see that we have some new ones here lately, uh, I am quoting what is called the consolidated tape volume. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we're up uh, seven points. Uh, volume is picking up. Um, 1498 uh, is going to be resistance. We broke through there uh, with significant volume, and uh, now we're looking uh, to bounce. And I can imagine we, you know, we had enough volume, uh, had enough energy come out of the market uh, that we could bounce around sideways. Uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, probably 80% probability, we're going to go down and test 1475 uh, to the 1472 uh, area on the S&P cash uh, before we go higher. Uh, but of course, uh, we've got uh, bulls out here, and uh, they are salivating like Pavlov's dog. They only know one thing. Every time the market pulls back, no matter how little, it's time to buy. Of course, uh, probably a lot of people were doing that all the day yesterday. Um, I'm getting a lot of emails asking about buying stuff now. Uh, as long as the summation index is headed down, uh, the risk is to the downside and significantly. Uh, yesterday, if you uh, looked at the beginning of the show, uh, we showed the summation index. It is a oscillator of advancers and decliners. And 
long, uh, at least medium term, one of the better uh, things to be. Normally, you want to be on the side. If it's headed down, you want to be short, and if it's headed up, you probably want to be long. Uh, we've had about uh, maybe two, three weeks of distribution in this marketplace. You can see it in the uh, in the advancers and decliners uh, in that McClellan summation index. Uh, if you want to link to it, uh, I've got one, and you can always email me with questions for the show if you get them in before noon at path at tfnn.com. Uh, and I'll be glad to answer your questions on air. Uh, once we're here, you really need to give me a call at 877-927-6648. That's 877-927-6648. And uh, eh, kind of interesting what's going on. Uh, still seeing a lot of weakness, not a lot of strength uh, in this market. And uh, we're going to get into uh, charts fairly early today. Uh, I've tried to stay away from the news. Uh, I just couldn't take it uh, uh, weaselly politicians lying about the uh, uh, what's uh, going to happen on Friday. Uh, in, in fact, it's hit kind of a fever pitch so much uh, that it was starting to affect me mentally. I, I, I almost hate to even bring it up, but when uh, you tell you, it, I think Mark uh, Twain said it, there's lies and there's stretchers and there's damn lies, maybe it's something like that, uh, or whoppers. And uh, right now, uh, we've got the president telling some absolute whoppers out there uh, about uh, the sequestration. Uh, we'd be spending about 2% uh, more uh, than we did uh, last year uh, if the sequestration goes through. And the uh, idea that uh, only spending more money is the only solution, uh, probably good if you believe in the equal distribution of misery as fairness, which is uh, some people's definition. Uh, that nobody could be happier than anybody else. And, of course, there's, a, in, uh, at least in the law, there's no such thing as fair. There's something called just. And uh, I think people that work harder are entitled to keep, uh, you know, a, a greater uh, amount of their money. And uh, those that uh, uh, not, don't pull the wagon but uh, to sit in it uh, probably not uh, included uh, or needed that much. But uh, anyway, uh, we've had uh, two things out here that I thought were significant, at least in political uh, reign, and that is one uh, in uh, the Affordable Hair, uh, Hair in the Affordable Care Act. Uh, part of it was uh, the ability to have a high-risk pool, uh, and the idea was that uh, people that couldn't get insurance anywhere else would go to uh, this pool. Well, it had got its 100,000 people in it. Uh, it was supposed to be handle up to a million. Uh, they had to close it at 100,000 last week uh, because guess what? They can't afford it. Uh, and uh, even the uh, leftmost uh, 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 economist out there is admitting um, that uh, they're going to have to have death panels to figure out who is going to die on this. Uh, Again, uh, socialism is uh, about 6,000 years old, and all through recorded history, it has always failed. So uh, I think eventually everybody tends to figure it out. And the question is, uh, do you just slide into being Greece, or do you decide uh, that it's uh, time to uh, wake up? Uh, for me, uh, the idea of uh, giving uh, any kids or grandkids the bill for what we're doing today is, seems to me uh, tantamount to slavery. Uh, we're giving him a bill we're not willing to pay for. Anyway, uh, as we uh, look through uh, stocks today, uh, we'll go through them fairly quick. Uh, we want to look at uh, some of the uh, uh, percentage gainers out here today. Uh, and uh, what else do we have? Uh, I want to look at a couple of these, uh, see if there's anything else really going on. Uh, uh, Hovenian is probably one of the most interesting stocks out here. Uh, and uh, what do we have out here? Uh, it's uh, taking a nice bounce out here. Uh, I think it's probably going to work its way and continue working its way down to this gap up. Uh, that gap uh, happened on uh, the 19th of November. Um, we bounced. Uh, not a lot of volume here today, and I don't expect us to get a lot more volume, uh, but one of the movers in a market that's uh, not really moving that far, uh, not uncommon that we see kind of a, 
uh, bounce out of some of these that continue to be the uh, strongest uh, part of the market. Um, and about 580 is what support comes in, and uh, about the bottom of that area is going to be 480, but uh, it looks like we're going to continue moving out that way for a little while. Just not a lot of volume so far today. Uh, wanted to look at a few other ones uh, that I haven't had a chance to look at since I came over here. One of them is Google. Uh, it is making a nice little dragonfly doji out here, uh, albeit a, a little bit uh, smaller one. And uh, uh, let's see if we can't get that. But uh, now Google uh, took off with a decent volume. Uh, and ideally, uh, if you wanted to go long this, uh, you're uh, looking for it. Uh, uh, it has physically tested the previous high at 774. Uh, like a lot of stocks that we've been chronicling over the last uh, few weeks, uh, no real volume came in. Uh, it didn't really uh, bust out with a sign of strength, uh, which suspects uh, that it's going to come back in this 774 area. I suspect also that we're probably going to see this thing down uh, between the 730 and $700 area, filling this gap, which is the last time it did have a strong move with volume, and that was on the uh, 23rd of January of this year. So uh, I look for it to probably come back in there. I think that we've gotten you know, some small trading ranges, uh, but uh, probably looking at some kind of pullback in Google. Uh, still one of the stronger stocks uh, in the uh, market out here today. Uh, again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648, 877-927-6648, and we'd be uh, glad to take your phone call. Uh, you know, not a huge movement out here in the marketplace. I want to update uh, some things. Uh, we did uh, close our gold short last Wednesday, which we chronicled on this show uh, short. Uh, we had options on the uh, GLD. Uh, it's up another eh, one and a third percent today. Uh, and when we look at GLD um, last week, we talked about why I decided to go ahead and cover it, and that was too many of these uh, peripheral gold stocks had been uh, making lows out in the uh, market. Uh, this one actually had uh, higher volume, and uh, as I've been talking here in the last few weeks also, uh, there is a uh, generally a exhaustion move in the marketplace. Uh, it comes when you see probably within the last year the highest volume of that uh, of that year, and we pretty much had that coming in on the low of February 20th. Uh, and uh, what we see in that is is it done going down? The answer is no. But normally you're going to get one two th two things when you have mass uh, massive volume uh, that's the highest of probably last year uh, that you're going to get a, either a bounce or it's going to go sideways. But it, normally all the volume takes the energy out. Uh, we're going to look at this a little bit more, but I think we've got a ABC setting up in this, and we'll show it when we come back. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. That's 877-927-6648. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investor Investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we come back, just wanted to remind everybody that uh, on uh, March 16th from 8.30 to noon in San Mateo, California, uh, we are going to have the Dynamic Trading Strategies uh, Conference uh, sponsored by Nadex. And uh, you need to get in there and uh, sign up right now. Uh, go to the front page of TFNN.com. I'm showing the web page on uh, Tiger TV right now. But if you check it out there, it says Dynamic Trading Strategies. Uh, but this is going to be uh, Tom O'Brien and Daryl Martin, and uh, you need to get signed up now. They're telling me it's going to sell out, so keep an eye on it. And uh, just wanted to let everybody know uh, on my rant out there that uh, we can always handle the truth here at uh, TFNN.com. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Well we, can handle, well, we can handle the truth here. I'm actually just testing this stuff out at the moment so that we can maybe give a little bit of spice, maybe a little salt and pepper uh, to the show here today with some of my better sound clips from movies out there. But uh, we'll see how it works out. Uh, anyway, I wanted to get back to gold because we were talking about that. And if we just looked at the GLD, uh, we were looking that uh, this is probably going to be moving up that 158 level on the uh, GLD. Uh, right now, we've uh, had a retrace of the move uh, from 164.40, which is the January 17th high, down to the February 20th low. Uh, that low was on uh, uh, what uh, 150, yeah, 84 on the 20th. 
Uh, and, you know, we've got a decent uh, volume down there uh, when you look at the actual ETF. Good indication that we're going to get that retested. Uh, but I think we're going to at least fill these gaps up here. Uh, there is the occasion that we could get up into 160, uh, one, one, eh, 160, yeah, 160, 161, uh, where there is one more gap up there. I don't think we're probably going to move that far. Uh, but uh, very light volume so far today as we uh, uh, bounce up here. Uh, but uh, I think maybe we have one more move up in this marketplace, and then that's going to set it up. Again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. We'd uh, gladly take your phone calls. I wanted to look at some other stocks uh, in the marketplace. I wanted to get to the advancers and decliners. Actually, when we look at the uh, uh, advancers and decliners, uh, just a few stocks out here that are uh, actually uh, interesting. We're probably going to get to a lot of other stocks. Uh, Commonwealth REIT, which we've been watching for a while. Uh, very bizarre action out here. Uh, it tanked the other day. It's popping up here. Um, I'm going to have to find out more about this. But we did bring it up on the show. And uh, I don't have enough time to check it out right now. Uh, we want to look at, of course, uh, the losers out here and see if there's anything really exciting. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, Vivas, Charles, Western Copper and Gold Corporation, uh, Boston Private Financial, Telephone Data, Halzone Therapeutics. You know, not a lot of, uh, at least on the uh, huge um, movers out here, a lot to really hang your hat on today. I wanted to go back and check out real quick. Uh, again, uh, not a lot of movement. Oh, let's see if I can get it out here. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Yeah, not a whole lot. Uh, let's see if we have anything else out here. Wanted to look at a few of the stocks, of more well-known stocks. We already uh, looked at Google. It got down to uh, uh, 784 today. Uh, Apple, of course, uh, is up uh, five bucks now. Uh, it got down to 437. So it got kind of getting close to that uh, 433 test uh, to see eh, about five bucks. Still suspect that it may be coming up, but uh, it is uh, gaining energy to move. And, uh, eh, yeah, it uh, got kind of close. It was 435 uh, for that last gap. Uh, we certainly are going to have a lighter volume out here. Uh, so we do have the potential uh, for a, at least a short-term bottom. Uh, don't be surprised. We've been looking at a lot of these stocks that have a gap down on huge volume. Uh, they do consolidate out for a while. They don't go straight down. Uh, when we look at this market, and let's see a couple of things. And we're up at eight points on the SP, 2.8 billion shares. Just wanted to check that out. Uh, other stocks that I probably wanted to start looking at out here is uh, Netflix NFLX. Um, this thing, of course, uh, a uh, short squeeze engineered by uh, Mr. Icon. And uh, you've got, I think, what uh, looks like a uh, nice. Uh, gap that this thing ran into almost uh, perfectly. You know, let's go back and look at this a little longer. Uh, when you look at it, this is when the uh, Netflix actually fell apart. Uh, that was on uh, September 15th of 2011. Uh, this thing came down with uh, 21 million shares, uh, as much as uh, 32 million shares as it came back down. We've been working through that level. Uh, and uh, tested it. Probably going to get one more test of that 197 in Netflix, and then uh, might be the uh, chance to start looking at it. Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today.
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We're going to go back and look at some of the movers of the last few days, see how they uh, weathered the storm out here. Uh, we were talking about Acrombie and Fitch uh, just a few days ago. This basically got in, did not test the top, uh, but uh, you could see uh, if you're looking at the power law vector indicator numbers uh, that we're probably off about, I don't know, 15, 20, yeah, 15 percent, I'm going to call it, uh, on the way back up. This one had a nice kind of W pattern to it, uh, and uh, we'll get it looking there a little bit better. Uh, but uh, it made a bottom. Uh, the volume didn't drastically uh, come out of it. Uh, and uh, also, uh, the, it didn't actually test uh, the previous low. That low came on June 25th, $29.51, since 2.3 million shares. Uh, you came into it uh, basically, what, uh, 57 cents higher on October 26th. So you do have a uh, high volume low uh, that is untested. Uh, if you actually look at it on a shorter or shorter time frame, we're going to uh, let me see, get it up here. You actually had a higher volume low uh, again on August 3rd at 2864 uh, that did bust that previous low out. Uh, so I'm calling it basically you need a test of something less than uh, 3.7. And you really didn't get it. So you've got uh, about a buck and a half, even lower than that October 26th low. Uh, so eventually, this thing's going to work its way down, uh, fill this gap down to about 30. Uh, of course, it's uh, already had a nice run 
uh, back off 5244, uh, which is the February 20th high. Uh, and maybe, you know, this thing could get a little bounce out of here next few days and set up an ABC down. Uh, but it certainly looks like it's going to be headed back into this uh, gap range, probably at least in the $40 range. Uh, it was heavily short and uh, had a big bounce. Uh, uh, Aruba Networks is one that uh, actually uh, peaked and uh, came and broke uh, the previous high with high volume. Uh, since then, uh, it's kind of hovered around, uh, but it hadn't backed off as bad as a lot of other stocks. Uh, if we were starting to get a uh, big rally in this market one more time, uh, this one, one I'd be uh, very interested in. Uh, not doing much here today. Uh, but, of course, we had that February 15th high with 3.6 million shares on February 15th, 25 bucks. Uh, we blew through it on the uh, uh, 22nd with 20 million shares. Uh, it hadn't done much since then. And, of course, all you really care is this thing uh, stay uh, above 25 bucks, which uh, eh, it's not really doing at the moment. So got to keep an eye on that. But uh, that is Aruba Networks. Uh, AVG, uh, another one looked uh, like it was going to try to get into its high. Of course, AVG, uh, the maker of software, uh, I use their products. Uh, pretty good, uh, a vast, uh, if you want, a free uh, virus checker. You can always go to CNET.com and download AVG, uh, a vast. Uh, not a bad thing. This uh, popped. Uh, it is a rather new IPO uh, and uh, doesn't, well, I'm trying to show you, is it two years? Yeah, I guess it's getting a little older uh, than I thought. But yeah, it's uh, it's only been around for a couple of years. Let's see what we have out here. Yeah, so uh, we're finally getting some uh, strength on this. It had some decent earnings. Uh, the history of virus checking software, though, uh, is a boom and bust. Normally, they give away their product free to gain market share. Uh, they convert people over with more features. Uh, and eventually add more and more features, uh, the product becomes a bloatware and then ends up being, uh, yes, I know, Avast and AVG are not the same company. Uh, uh, AVG, I was just saying they could get Avast for free. Okay. We've got to have, at least at one time during the show, Steve has to uh, throw his uh, peanuts in to the show here, my engineer out here. So uh, yeah, it's, I'm not sure which one's more looks like he's in an aquarium, uh, him on that side or me on this side. But uh, it's uh, got to always have to look through the glass. Anyway, AVAG, uh, this thing's coming up. Uh, actually had some decent volume. Again, we're seeing a lot of these stocks come up to these highs with high volume and back off of them. Uh, not a bad move over the last few days on this one. Uh, be on the lookout for a possible break out on that one. Uh, a pullback down to that level would then be your buy signal. So there's nothing for you to do uh, right away, but start watching that. We talked a little bit about Barnes uh, and Noble. Uh, they had a, a kind of a big blow off over the last three days with huge volume. Normally, this is exactly what they call a blow off top. Uh, what we look back in here today is a little bit of support in this $26 area. Uh, but uh, this kind of very strange, we're seeing this monstrous volume come in. Uh, the last major high was on April uh, 25th. Uh, let me blow that up just a little. April 25th and had uh, just a little under 500,000 shares. And you had 1.3 million on that February 2nd uh, blow off move to the top. Uh, we are right back into it and back down into that $26 range already. Uh, this is probably why I'm not uh, very uh, bullish out here in the market right now. I'm just trying to see if we're getting any indication uh, of which way this market's going to break before. We're right at uh, resistance at 1498 on the S&P cash, uh, 2.9 billion shares. So uh, we're really not picking up a lot of volume to the upside so far. We'll have to see how this market uh, closes, of course. CENX, uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, CoreLogic, COG, Cabot Oil and Gas, a uh, nice little uh, breakout uh, here to the top over the last few days. COG is the symbol on this one. Uh, you had volume, uh, and again, you actually holding up a little bit better. Uh, if we are looking for higher prices for oil, which I'm thinking that we're actually going to be lower. Uh, but this is one of the few that is busted out. 
Uh, you want to be looking at this when it comes back at around the 55.75 area, 56 dollar area. Uh, I think we're probably going to see this in the next few days. Probably give us a good indication if this thing comes back with a lighter volume uh, that we might have an actual breakout in that stock. Uh, let's see what we have out here. Uh, Endeavor. A lot of these stocks we're moving. I oh, want to look at. Uh, uh, get here. Hang on a second. Uh, source fire. Uh, symbol is F I R E. And uh, this one, another one that uh, broke out uh, uh, about the same high as the previous uh, value. It's still uh, about a buck and a half off the highs, but I'm watching this one to see uh, how it reacts. Actually, uh, kind of a nice retracement out of this one today. Uh, of course, we had uh, on February 22nd uh, about a million shares. It's not a, a huge uh, uh, volume stock normally out here. Uh, yeah, 4.1 million shares on that uh, February 2nd day. Uh, but that's pretty much what this thing did on November 1st of 2012, 4.2 million shares. Basically getting into that candle and finding uh, resistance in this. Um, we need a breakout of uh, that uh, uh, $50 level. We'll take you back up to about $58 on a September 6th high. Uh, FRO, which is frontline. Uh, we've been watching to see whether this one uh, would uh, gain some support. Uh, it is kind of interesting. We are seeing a few of these things uh, dip their toe down below and then pull back in. The November 23rd of 2011 low was $2.52 on this one. Uh, and uh, when you actually see uh, this thing coming in, yeah, you had a couple of big days, but they were about 3 million shares. So you are breaking that previous low of November 23rd, 2011 on lighter volume out here. And uh, let's see. Just make sure. I keep on every time I see Frontline, I think of dog collars. Uh, but it is a dry uh, uh, bulk shipper and oil tank shipper, and of course uh, they continue to move lower out here. I wouldn't call this a uh, huge sign of strength, but uh, it has started to move. So uh, see if uh, Dries is doing anything better out here. If we can get anything in these dry bulk shippers. And uh, now you still have a high volume low uh, in dries, and that's that November 16th low of last year with 13 million shares. Uh, and uh, you can almost make a case that uh, uh, it got tested at a dollar 53, but uh, that's still what seven cents higher uh, than that November 16th low. Uh, not uncommon to see the first test out of here on lighter volume push back up, but. Uh, I'm going to say this thing is driving its way back down to that dollar forty-six low in dry ships, and um, we might be actually seeing a bottom in some of these uh, as uh, uh, a lot of these ships get taken out of service and uh, the prices come up a little bit higher. Uh, HPQ, uh, pretty amazing. I had some decent earnings out here. Uh, they are now getting back into the uh, resistance levels that we've uh, been looking at. Uh, that is the uh, August uh, 21st highs out here, $20.36. So we're still this shy of that uh, 21 million shares. Uh, we've had uh, a yeah, pretty good, uh, uh, but, uh, just a monstrous move. But again, you see all that volume in one day, uh, which is on the 22nd when they came out with earnings, uh, with 133 million shares. And uh, you get a nice gap out here. Uh, it is not uncommon to see all the energy taken out. I would, in fact, like this thing to come back down in that uh, $16.50 range on very light volume, maybe over the next, uh, during the next pullback. And it might actually be set up for some kind of decent move. Uh, you still have an untested low out here at $11.35. And most likely that is going to get tested. Uh, it did have high volume, 150 million shares. And uh, you probably might get a few bounces out of here. Uh, but uh, this is setting up to, uh, uh, if you had a decent pullback in HPQ, $11.35 on lighter volume. And uh, unless something really bad happens, my, I'm going to suspect that is going to be a buy point uh, in Hewlett Packard for the long term. So uh, what else do we have in Umatics, uh, MSI, 
Let's see if there's a few other ones out here. Patrick Industries and Trulia. I uh, wanted to take a look at that. We've been talking about a lot of blow-off tops uh, in these uh, markets, and truly is one kind of uh, that, you know, you want to see these things come back down with lighter volume. Truly, it was not. Of course, it was one of these uh, that spiked uh, heavily on earnings, I think in this case on Zillow's earnings, uh, and uh, truly, O T R L A. Uh, you know, you took off with a heavy volume on the 13th, uh, and uh, just no volume in the next two days, about half the volume, actually, of that breakout day. Uh, but when we came back down and got into this gap, uh, 1.8 uh, million shares on the 22nd, uh, last a couple of days out here, uh, fairly uh, light volume. Uh, but uh, that heavy volume day is going to make this thing move out sideways for quite a while. Uh, trying to think of what else. Uh, P A N L. I wanted to check this out. Uh, we'd seen this thing come off with heavy volume over the last uh, day, and uh, it uh, looks like it's going to be working its way down again to the twenty-one dollar and fifty-five cent level. Uh, not a lot of follow through yet today. Again, all these huge candles tend to make the market move sideways at least for a few days, and uh, or at least get a little bounce out of them. And uh, I think we're having that right now. So uh, eh, continue to look at that. I uh, wanted to look at uh, MSFT and some of these other tech stocks to see whether or not there's anything moving inside them. And so far, um, you know, looking at Microsoft uh, at the uh, well, up at the upper end of its uh, trading range, which is somewhere around uh, the man eh, what mid twenty eight twenty eight dollars twenty cents down to twenty six dollars twenty eight cents. It's been uh, basically working up some cause, some light volume over the last uh, week or week and a half. So it ends up being a uh, bigger problem. Uh, but uh, yeah, not a lot of movement out here suggesting one way or the other. Uh, when we look at Intel, I've uh, been kind of watching this stock. Uh, it came down with uh, not enough volume over the last couple of days. It was testing its previous low of September, or excuse me, December 31st that had 41 million shares at $20.16, went below it, closed back above it uh, with a lighter volume. So you're probably going to move this thing back up to $21.50 uh, before it sets up its next move. But I, I think there's probably a good chance we're going to see this November 21st low at $19.23 uh, tested before this is a viable trade. Uh, you can maybe get a buck out of it uh, to the upside here, but it's continue to be weak. Uh, we're going to be going uh, to break here in a minute. Just want to remind everybody, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. That's 877-927-6648. And see if we can't uh, find out uh, how some of these other ones. wanted to bring up Six Flags because it was a nice little Gartley pattern out here. Let's see if we can get it out here. Uh, what do I got? There we go. There we go. Uh, Six Flags Entertainment, uh, not uncommon to see uh, these companies uh, uh, break, and I suspect that they're doing a little bit better because of uh, uh, the prices of gas, people staying a little closer. Uh, there's a lot of these Six Flags theme parks that are less than a, uh, a gas a tank of gas drive, uh, but they tend to uh, peak, uh, and this, this got a, well, we're going to go through it when we come back, but... Uh, uh, not a lot of uh, strength on this thing on the breakout, uh, and it's uh, pretty much hit its D target for a Gartley butterfly. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market, something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll 
you'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. As we come back, we're talking about Six Flags Entertainment. Uh, we've been talking a little bit about Gartley Patterns. Uh, and uh, just uh, looking at this one, had a long move out of here from the seed to D leg on the Six Flags uh, entertainment move. Uh, C point came in on December uh, 26. Uh, kind of meandered away uh, up to uh, and a little higher than the $68.14 uh, target that the Gartley pattern would indicate. Uh, we've pulled back into this level. Uh, but what you really wanted to see is a break at least somewhere above uh, half a million shares, which was the X point volume and the uh, B point volume. Uh, and you got into it with uh, you know, you had the volume as it broke that uh, level with 1.5 million shares, but, you know, next day 800,000 shares, next day 600,000 shares, and a pull back to that level. So uh, kind of interesting. Uh, maybe one of those stocks is going to be a little tougher to look at. It. Uh, uh, turn off Gartley Patterns out here. And he said, you know, we've had these housing stocks pull back. Uh, Hovenian 
Uh, we were looking at this and talking about it bouncing, but not a lot of volume today. Uh, when we look at li uh, liquid, uh, lumber liquidators, uh, which symbol is LL out here, another one that looked uh, maybe a little bit better than the volume it had, so maybe it's a little stronger. Uh, MDC, which is uh, MDC Holdings, uh, kind of a, uh, eh, I wouldn't call it a uh, uh, cloud covering, but uh, an inside day on it. MHK, which is uh, Mohawk Industries, uh, this is one that's heavily owned by uh, Buffett out here. Volume did pick up uh, in yesterday's downdraft after a pop-up, uh, and basically filling about half that candle out today. Uh, Pulte Homes, uh, another one out here, uh, but uh, volume probably going to come in about what it was like in yesterday. Uh, so we're pretty much uh, looking at these levels, uh, about 18 dollars and 30 cents to 17 dollars and 50 cents is Pulte Homes support level. Uh, you kind of meandered into that uh, probably looking at maybe another 50 cents down before that thing starts to land. Ryland Homes, uh, this one has already come back into the trading range a little bit. Volume didn't really specifically pick up too high. Um, this thing got down to 33 dollars and 50 cents. Uh, the September 21st uh, high out here was 33.93. Uh, so it got uh, 50 cents, uh, 43 cents lower than that high, but it had 4.1 million shares back in that day. That's going to act as support, and and what basically what we're finding out here is just uh, closing the low 34s out here for Ryland. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, select Comfort, SPF, uh, Standard Pacific. Uh, we look at this. We've been talking about this one for a while. Uh, it's a uh, basically come well back into the trading range and pretty much now at a resistance level. Volume has picked up a little bit on this. And the last one in this housing sector uh, was USG Corporation. Uh, basically you had a uh, uh, high volume, uh, broke out the previous high of November 2nd, which was $28.21 with 2 million shares, 2.2 million shares. Uh, you had a big volume day though that came back down and we're in that today which was on the 7th of uh, February, uh, we were seeing 3.7 million shares. So we've come back in there. It's been heavier volume than that November 2nd high. So that 28.21 is now going to be resistance level on USG. Probably going to get a decent answer out here in the next couple of days, whether we're going to see this housing market stay back under these or start moving back up. Uh, just a quick look at this market before we close out here today, because uh, we are getting close. Let's see what we have. Yeah, 1469. Uh, we got right up to that 1498 uh, level, and uh, that's going to be resistance in the S&P cash. Yeah, 1496 right now. Uh, Three billion shares. Uh, not a big a volume move out here uh, on the opposite side, but uh, up eight points. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Have a good evening.